You're still watching ways now. First aid is the is the first and immediate assistance given to anyone who suffers from either minor or serious illness or injury, with care provided to preserve life, prevent the condition from worsening, or to promote recovery. The purpose of first aid is to minimize injury and future disability. In serious cases, first aid may be necessary to keep the victim alive before a doctor arrives to apply the more specialized treatment. World First Aid Day is an annual campaign to promote the importance of first aid training in preventing injuries and saving lives. So today, how many of you can perform maybe CPR? Let me see. Uh -huh. I've forgotten. Like you I forgotten? learned it, but mm. I, I have to refresh. Yeah, it was it was a requir requirement for me in one of my old jobs. So um, there's a charitable organization that does the training for organization. Mm -hmm. So we we had to do you it. Fold your arms. Yes, and particularly and for the infant. I think everyone who has a child should know how to yeah. do it. Because, agreed. Yeah, agreed. Something yeah. I have to learn. And yeah. All right. So. Hopefully, everyone out there should go and learn it. A and thing at least or have two. a first aid kit at home. Yeah, it's I do. I, I do have. have I have a box. Mm. I mean, mm -hmm. and you know, it's it's funny. Who's, who's seen that thing that goes around every once in a while about the things you should have in your car? Mm. So yes. a first aid kit is one of them. Yeah, exactly. So. Oh, I've not thought about that. Yes, no, you should have. Yeah, it. Okay. You should have one. In case a little you're just one driving in your car. and something happens, and particularly mm. the respiratory ones, like yeah. you know, knowing how to. Absolutely. I think that's critical. All right, so let me go with Timmy. Bright and yellow. What's your story for us tonight? So my story for today is um, in the last one or two weeks, every time I go on social media, it's just a barrage of disconcerting news. Um, I just feel like no good news, you know. So today I just wanted to project something positive, right? So Whoopi Goldberg is asking for Disney to build a Wakanda-themed um, park, you know, in honor of Chadwick Boseman. And I love that because, I mean... Disneyland is the happiest place mm -hmm. on earth, right? That's what they say. And that's what Chadwick did because he was going through a lot of um, pain personally, but he still brought a lot of happiness and um, hope to the yeah. black culture, the African-American um, community in the U.S. and indeed the world, you know. Even yesterday, I think they were having that return home, Ghana. Mm -hmm. uh, they oh, yeah, had yeah. something mm -hmm. and they actually had, you know, something in honor of the mm -hmm. guy. So I, I like that idea. It would be nice to go, even as an adult, like, I go to yeah. Disney and Universal Studios and I have more fun yeah. than the children. So I think it would be nice to be able to, to go to a Wakanda, you know, I, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure I think it's, it's um, or why I like the story actually, mm -hmm. um, beyond being themed for Chadwick Boseman, um, I was trying to remember off the top of my head, I believe Africa is the only continent that doesn't have a Disney theme park. Mm -hmm. So Europe has mm -hmm. Disney, uh, mm -hmm. North America has. Um, Even I in believe Asia, it's Asia. Yeah. they built they one. Disney. So really, we we don't have one. Mm -hmm. um, so Help it would us. be a good thing. Exactly, <laughs> <laughs> it would be a good thing for them to build one here. We certainly have the the numbers for yeah. it. So. And and a lot of them, a lot of Africans in that. So Ghana is really trying to establish as the home of mm -hmm. you know. Africans Returns. in diaspora mm. and all of that, but so I'm not saying they should build it in Ghana. I think in Nigeria we have mm -hmm. more space. Let's not open. need light before your child will be inside one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, I need child we'll power. Uh, it I so. P, independent I was, power plant. I was just going to say let's not open that kind of one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We talked about ease of doing business yesterday. <laughs> Let's okay. not go there. They won't go there. <laughs> and after 55 minutes, this Susie is like, I don't know that we've done justice. <laughs> Did you see all this one that tell me, say she will not carry her children there <laughs> because... Uh, <laughs> It's not my child that will be stuck oh, yes. somewhere. Exactly. What do you, what so, did you find um, so my story, in fact, when I saw the headline for this story, I thought it was COVID related, but it actually isn't. And the headline says, Lagos seals of church and others in Suleri moves against illegal conversion of open spaces. So this, the, the story talks about the Lagos state government sealing off buildings, commercial buildings. Um, so a fuel, a, fuel, um, a fuel station, a church, a container terminal. And I mean, we and all know Suleri, right? Okay. Oh. And Suleri is a predominantly residential with the with the um, exception of maybe Body Thomas and uh, Adenio Gusoya. It's largely residential. And you can mm -hmm. find like four churches on exactly. one street. Exactly. So the idea is, and I remember this happening. So, I mean, I grew up uh, in Festac and Festac was well designed and well built and it had parks and it had all these things. And these open spaces that were created for the purpose of one, um, having greenery to clean the air, drainage, so these problems that we have today with drainage and all of and that. just the sanity So, exactly. The so, this is Lagos State Government saying, you know what, within um, Suleri, I believe it's around the Williams Estate area, 
um, that the Residents Association have identified and reported these um, organizations and buildings to say that they shouldn't be there. They've gone and built in open spaces that weren't for that purpose. So, I mean, this is nice, but it's a very reactive approach. Mm. So, again... Um, what happened to when they were seeking for building permits? And that was and the planning and so zoning that is I, I know in of Lagos. quite a few developers within the Lekki area whose developments have been shut down because they didn't have the necessary paperwork. So how did this happen in mm -hmm. Suleri? So are we targeting the places where we know we can make money and then leaving other areas? So it should be more proactive. Absolutely. There should be more monitoring and you know, we can prevent these kind of things from happening. Absolutely. I have a story, but I'm going to pass it on <laughs> to, <laughs> tell me, to establish it. So uh, my story says, um, why North lost its um, industries wealth? That's from Sanusi. And for the life of me. As a northerner. As a northerner. <laughs> no, but honestly, growing up, you know, we had a lot of industries. We had textile industry, KTL, UNTL. I think there were three yeah, textile know, companies. Know, yes. We UNTL. had the refineries working. I mean, uh, Kaduna was an industrial hub. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people lived in Kaduna. They worked in Kaduna, you know, from all parts of um, Nigeria. They were there. So it's actually very sad whenever I go, because my mom's um, place of business is actually located around that industrial hub. I know that because my mom ran a big restaurant in Kaduna. When it was lunch time, they used to come in 24-seater buses. Like wow. in troops, they come wow. from different companies, from MTN, I mean, sorry, from, um, from um, Guinness, from, uh, what's it called, from um, um, NNPC. They come in their staff bus to come and have lunch. But all of those things, business oh. just You know, I died. get that so, feeling when yeah. I go to Ilupeju as well. Yeah. So can you tell us why? So what he's in, saying, in one minute, yeah. <laughs> so he's just trying to establish the fact that, look, they had all of that, you know, and that it was actually even modeled after um, Manchester, you know, mm -hmm. like the industrial hub for England and all of that. But after the World Trade Organization um, had some treaty that allows for, you know, like foreign competition and foreign goods in the local mm -hmm. market and all of that, that, that kind of crippled stuff. Like the industries could not compete with mm -hmm. the, you know, Nigerians, you like that foreign mm -hmm. one. So he's just saying, look, going forward, it's something we have to look at proactively especially for agriculture because mm -hmm. we have to start looking at agriculture outside of that subsistence farm, uh, farming yeah. and just a small yeah. you yeah. know because it's today contributes about 46 percent of gdp mm -hmm. but attracts only one percent of bank lending so All we right. have to invest in agriculture so that people can it can create jobs again and then we can so that's that. why she's the financial <laughs> expert i had to give her back the story <laughs> all right so we'll see you after the break <laughs> to discuss cyber security please stay with us <laughs> 